I'm Nikita. And I'm Will. Oh, he didn't come over this time. I guess you're too far away. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Say How You Feel podcast. And on the Say How You Feel podcast, we assist budding entrepreneurs with getting clear about what they need to do to be successful on their journey. And how do we do that? We do that by having some very inspiring, awesome guests on the podcast to give us some insight into what they're doing on their entrepreneurial journey, which hopefully will inspire you and us uh, to be better, do better on our journey and just stay on track, right? In the entrepreneurial journey. But before I tell you who we are speaking with today, we gotta pay the bills. So today we are going to be talking with the beautiful Latoya Whitfield. She is an unapologetic keynote speaker. That means that when she gives her keynote speeches, you say, ouch. She is a coach and a mentor. She is known for her spunky personality, positive attitude, and determination inspiring others to reach their full potential. One of Latoya's significant contributions and the beginning of her journey was Huntsville, Alabama Community Resources, which has provided financial literacy, resources, and support for entrepreneurs. Her favorite quote is, it's never too late to be what you might have been. Oh, I like that. This quote was life-changing for Latoya and sparked the motivation to walk in her true purpose and become a full-time queenpreneur in May 2021. Through her nonprofit, A Queenpreneur's Plan, we're going to ask her more about that, Latoya has proven to be a trailblazing phenomenon one woman, increasing the representation of female Black-owned businesses. Her dedication to supporting the community extends to her personal life, as she is a wife and mother who enjoys traveling and volunteering for charitable causes. So without further ado, we introduce to you, present to you, Latoya Whitfield. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. We greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Totally excited about talking with you uh, and seeing what insights you have and finding out more about what it is that you're doing. So without any delay, we're just going to jump right in. So the first question I have for you is what led you to become a purpose coach? Ooh, OK. So when I when I saw that question, I said, yeah. They're going to have to get all the meat and potatoes because I can't just say this without <laughs> telling how it started. Come on. Um, what led me to be a purpose coach was literally the fact that I did not know what my purpose was. Mm. Um, I, uh, by the time I was about, uh, I would say probably about 20, 25 uh, 24, 25, I had um, my bachelor's degree and my master's degree. And um, by the time I was, I got married around probably like 28, but I was a single mom before I mm -hmm. even met my husband. And uh, we got married and then I just thought, okay, once I get married, I'm going to be good. I'm just, air all the pieces are going to come together. You know, I'm, I'm going to be working this nice job. They got great benefits. And, you know, I can leave around four o'clock so I can go get my <laughs> children from daycare. You know, mm -hmm. all of those things. And I started to realize how small minded that was. Because okay. society had always taught us that these are the things that we need to have to be successful and be fulfilled. But I was in my office one day. And I just started to feel just empty. And I said, it has to be more to life than this. And I just started finding all quotes that would motivate me and encourage me and inspire me. And the first quote that I saw 
was it's never too late to be what you might have been. Mm. And that's why I say that quote was life changing for me because by the time this happened, I had had my third child and only okay. child and last child that I'm going to have. <laughs> and it was, <laughs> and um, I had him in 2018. And, okay. and it made me start thinking about the, like, was I truly successful in mm-hmm. life? And I started asking God to show me what my purpose was. And he said, if you start giving, I'll show you what your purpose is. Mm. And, and keep in mind, I've always had a heart to give and serve, but because I was so uh, introverted or, or we had been taught to say shy, uh, but it was really introverted. I didn't really like to be in the public eye. So I would always do things behind the scenes. Well, when he told me to do that, I said, okay, Lord, you're going to have to show me how to give because I don't like to be around people like that, you know? And he gave me the instructions. And that's when I created Huntsville, Alabama Community Resources. Okay. And I created Huntsville, Alabama Community Resources because I felt that there was a lack of information that was being shared, free information that was Mm -hmm. being shared. And I was like, why are we withholding information that's free to the public? I I don't really understand. And it's it's almost as if people felt like, okay, as long as I'm taken care of, as long as my family Mm -hmm. has resources, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to share it. Well, I started researching and I ended up landing on this amazing resource called Huntsville, Alabama Community Resources. And it, uh, I mean, um, I'm sorry, uh, Hardest Hit Alabama. Okay. And this actual grant paid my mom's house off in 30 days. Wow. My mom owed $36,000 on her house. Her house was paid off in 30 days. And everything that I would share with that community was always things that I would research and I would prove that it works. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I had experienced what it meant to actually have a money mindset. Mm. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I remember uh, God telling me, okay, so now it's time to start your business. And I'm looking like, what? I was (laughs) like, we just got here. And so I started off as teaching people about budgeting and credit. That was what was familiar with me. I had been working in banking for years and that was familiar with uh, to me. And I started doing budgeting and credit. And, um, and so I was, I was, I was considering myself to be a financial coach. I thought, okay, this is it. This is it. Mm -hmm. Until I kept going, I kept going and I was growing and I was growing and I was outgrowing the clientele that I had. Okay. And I said, okay, there's more. And I was like, mindset is is really crucial. I was like, it has nothing to do with these people's capability of, of being able to budget or manage finances. They don't even believe that they deserve it. They don't even mm. believe that they should have it. And so I said, okay. So God said, okay, you got to get rid of all your clients and you got to start over from scratch. And I said, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I see. I see what you're doing. And um, so I had to get rid of all my clients, start over. And um, and the the, uh, the transformation and the transition to this is going to be amazing for the audience to hear because you don't always land on what you're supposed to be doing just yet. Mm-hmm. And so as I was going through that transition, I said, okay, I have I always talked about purpose and I knew that purpose was important, but I didn't feel confident enough to teach it just yet. So I said, okay, well, this is the reason why I feel like people are not being successful in business because they, they're just doing it for money. Like they don't even have a purpose behind why they're doing it. And it's heavily linked to the money mindset piece of it as well. And okay. so, um, so I, I said, okay, well, I'm just going to play it safe. And I'm just going to call myself a money mindset coach. And in that Mm -hmm. way, I can still talk about purpose. Well, money mindset was something that the community didn't really always gravitate to as well, because most people don't think they have a mindset problem. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. so um, I actually ended up saying, okay, well, I'm going to transition and I'm going to 
um, I'm going to have this event. And in this event, I'm going to teach people. I'm going to call it business credit. Okay. But it's not necessarily going to be about business credit. I'm going to teach them or something about business credit, but I'm going to give them the actual meat of why this event actually even happened. And then that's how the whole transition into the money mindset piece started. But then I could also then talk about purpose as to mm -hmm. how you would attract money based on your purpose. Like when you know what your purpose is, money comes and find you. You don't have to go and look for it. It's searching for you. It's finding you. It's trying to say, I need this person. You are a need. And I ended up, I was, I was researching this coach for years, for years, for years. And um, she lived in Boston, Massachusetts. I didn't know her. I was not connected to her. It, I know, knew nothing about her other than God said that that was my coach. Okay. And so I decided to invest in her. And guess what she teaches? She <laughs> is teaching about purpose. And okay. I said, okay, God, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> and the more I learned from her, I said, oh, my gosh, this was the same thing that I was afraid to teach about. And I okay. was trying to camouflage it with all of these fancy titles of money, thinking that, hey, this is not all. If, if I talk about money, it's going to attract money. But I wasn't aware that I was still camouflaging my purpose. Mm -hmm. And so she even helped me work through some of the mindset things that I was experiencing before I could even elevate to being a purpose coach. And so as we go, we fast forward a few years later, and then I said, okay, I'm dropping money mindset. I'm a purpose coach. And I say it boldly and I say it confidently. And if people don't know what it is, they don't have nothing to do with me. But I know that I'm a purpose coach and I know I was called to help people become the best version of themselves so that they could live authentically in their purpose. And so that's why I became a, a purpose coach. That is, I mean, totally awesome. I was taking notes uh, <laughs> while you were talking <laughs> because I love it um, because I'm an, I, I am an introvert too. Uh, so even doing like doing the interviews, I have a broadcast that I do. I had to work through some stuff to even be able to do it <laughs> because, yeah, I, I understand all things. Uh, so I wanted to ask you because you said something that in the beginning uh, when you were doing the financial piece uh, with your clients that you had outgrown the clientele. What do you mean by that? Um, most people had actually, of course, they saw my influence and then they wanted to be a part of that. However, even though they were coming to me and they were coming to me for these like very economical prices, they mm -hmm. still weren't, they still wasn't doing the work. Mm -hmm. So they would pay me and then I'm, I'm getting paid. I'm good. You know, and it wasn't that amount of much that they had to pay, but yet they weren't invested enough to even put the effort in mm -hmm. to even do the work. So there was a mindset issue that was happening. And so for me, that's when I decided, hey, once I transition, I'm going to get me a coach to help me structure my pricing. And that's mm -hmm. when I started uh, uh, increasing my prices. Once I increased my prices, I started to attract people that wanted to actually work on their mindset. They might not have been there yet, but right. I, I attracted people that actually wanted to put in the effort to work on their mindset. I attracted me. Right. I attracted right. me. The person that I was becoming and the person that I wanted to become was the person that I wanted to attract. And that's why I changed it and I shifted that. But yeah, they were not ready to grow and go on that journey because they were not ready to invest in themselves enough. I, I love, love that. Them. I did love right, them. right, <laughs> right, right, and 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 right, right, and then you 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 had sometimes you might go through and not you you but just in general you might go through this thing of uh you know should I do it am I leaving them behind but when you're when you're coaching or you're doing something that has a price point what happens is is that if you stay at that price point and you stay with those people and we and we do we love them and we appreciate their business we pray for them that god bless them tenfold for what they you know for what they spent out with us and all the things but what it does is it keeps you stuck and stagnant in that mindset mm -hmm. and if you don't elevate yourself you'll still be down there with them right you won't you won't grow 
So I admire the fact that you realized that early enough on <laughs> that you were able to say, you know what? I love these people, but I got to move forward. That is like totally key in anything that you're doing, that in order for you to move forward and elevate and move up, you can't be afraid. And you have to know that in order for you to change how you're thinking about what you're doing, that you got to leave those folks behind that, you know, thanks for helping me get to where I am. I greatly appreciate you. You're totally awesome, but I got to keep it going. Um, the other something else that you were talking about, you were saying uh, you mentioned something and the note that I wrote down was keep your purpose in the forefront. So I wanted to ask this question based off of that. How important is a plan to to someone living out their purpose? So it's so funny that you say a plan is because I named a queenpreneur's plan that because there needed to be a plan in place. Mm -hmm. And so when you are operating your purpose and you don't write down what you see your future looking like, then you're just going to be all over the place. You're not going to be organized and you're going to say, okay, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. And then you end up being in so many places. That's the reason why you have someone that may be gifted and may be called to be a creative in a lot of different spaces. But what they do is they try to do all of them at once. And when they try to do all of them at once, that's when it when that's when it fails. I have a mm -hmm. great example. I know someone that not only is she a makeup artist, but she's also a photographer and she's also uh, an artist. Okay. Did she start to do all of those things at once? No, she had to brand herself in a way that when people would come to her, they wouldn't be confused. Mm -hmm. And so she focused on makeup for probably 10 years. And then after, after focusing on, ten, on makeup for 10 years, then she transitioned into photography and she focused on that for probably maybe a good three, four years, maybe, you know, and then she transitioned into art. So when people look at her, they're looking at her as a creative. They're mm -hmm. not necessarily saying, oh, uh, um, I gotta, I don't even know what to go to her for. No, she's mm -hmm. branded herself in such a way that that's what people see. That's good. That's good. It was like a, a transformation slash elevation that she, yes. she stayed, she did this, did it, and then got to where uh, essentially where her fire was, where her passion was, which I'm sure was the art. But both all of those things fed into that. So that is really good. You figuring out, figuring out how to live out your purpose starts with a plan. And I always, one of the, I have so many journals <laughs> that I've jotted stuff down in. I try to make sure that I date the stuff, but it's so important to write down, to have a strategy and write down what it is uh, that God is leading you to do and not just try to do it by the seat of your pants. I've said this, I always mess this up. I say this on another podcast, is Habakkuk. <laughs> what is it? Two and one. Yeah, there you go. Is it two, one through three about writing the vision down and then running with it? I was talking about this on my another broadcast that I do the other day. It's not just that you write it down, but you have to run with it. It says you have to yeah. run like a herald, which means that you got to talk about it. You got to put it on display. What it is that God's given you uh, to do once you've written it down, you got to do something to uh, bring it into fruition. Mm -hmm. um, something that you mentioned um, that's in your bio is that your approach is using the MAPS framework. So can you tell us about what MAPS is? And it's an acronym. It's M-A-P-S. What does that stand for? Um, MAPS is how I got here. Okay. It, it's, it, it truly is the roadmap to how I got to where I was at. And the first thing that I had to attack before I could even attract the type of clientele that I wanted to attract was to focus on my mind. Mm -hmm. If I didn't believe that I was worthy or, or, or worthy of having those type of clientele, if I didn't feel like that I was worthy of having a business, if I didn't feel like I was worthy to be able to operate in my purpose, then how in the world would anybody want to work with me? And so there was a confidence level that I needed to obtain through becoming the best version of myself. And then the A is still heavily connected to, to, the, to the mindset because you attract, once you start to operate in the, pers of the, the future you, the person that you desire to become, the clients that you desire to attract, 
it automatically starts to come together because now people are walking up to you and they're attracted to to what you, you even your spirit not just what you're mm-hmm. wearing but your spirit your confidence the way that you walk in the room somebody said when you walk you walk like uh like you own the room. I say I walk like that because I know what my purpose is and that nobody mm-hmm. can come to me and make me feel less than that. Mm-hmm. And so then the P comes in with, okay, after I worked on my mindset and the attraction part, then now, okay, now I, I can believe that I'm worthy of knowing what my purpose is. And so I have to now discover what my purpose is. And, and that alone is a journey. Once you discover what your purpose is, then you start to put all of those things together because now you can attract, you can attract money. You're no longer chasing. You're no longer looking for people. You're no longer comparing yourself to anybody else because your purpose is for you, is unique, is you, is what you were born to do. And you the only one that's getting mad. Ain't nobody else mad. Just you. <laughs> and that's why. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know what this is. There's a connection. No, your phone's trying to connect. I'm sorry. Mm -mm. Oh, Mm -hmm. I need to pause this. I think we uncovered the purpose, and that is truly what I had to discover. Okay, I have to discover my purpose so that I can go on this journey to success. And the last one is the most important one, which is stewardship. Stewardship is so important, but people fail to realize that, hey, I need to be able to steward not only my purpose, my gifts, but I need to be able to steward the relationships, the people that I'm connected to. I need to be able to properly build relationships. And so a lot of times people are not stewarding the people that are around them. And that's the reason why they're not leveling up in their next part of, uh, of their journey, because they're not stewarding their resources. And so that's how I came to maps because that's truly how I got to where I'm at now. I'm taking notes <laughs> because that is really good. The stewardship part about being a good steward over all resources, not just the finances, but the people uh, as well that have been attracted to you that you are serving, but that you need to be a good um, steward over them that I never even would have. I think we're probably doing that, but I wouldn't have thought to put it in that framework. So like, that is really good. That is a very good nugget to be. Yeah. That is a very good nugget uh, for entrepreneurs to have is that to be a good steward over the people that have come to you that are, that you are able to share your purpose with in whatever way you're sharing it. That is really good. Um, Yeah, that's really good. I like that. Uh, (laughs) I'm going to have to sit with that for a while. Um, What is your, uh, so you have a nonprofit and it's the Queen Preneur's Plan, but what exactly is the nonprofit and how do you serve people through the Queen Preneur's Plan? So a Queen Preneur's Plan is truly, truly my baby. Um, And Again, let me take you on this journey because the the, the background of it matters. Um, when God first told me that I was going to start a Queenpreneur's plan, mm-hmm. I just remember the enemy saying, you're not good enough to do this. Wow. You're not even good enough to do this. And God made me remember how, and, and see, this is going to be so important because I need you to understand that I had an experience with Black women. And to the point where I didn't want to work with black women anymore. Mm -hmm. And one day God told me that if you don't want to work with black women and you don't want to do business with black women, then you don't like yourself. And that was when I truly was able to see, okay, Lord, so this is how we doing it. You're going to just say (laughs) that, you know, I don't like myself. Like what? (laughs) And so what he was showing me is that all of the experiences that I had is not every black woman. That's first Mm -hmm. of all. And the experiences that I have had, how am I going to shift or change anything if I don't be the change? Wow. How am I going to, to impact anything if I'm complaining about what I'm experiencing? And what I had discovered in that journey was that uh, a lot of people in our culture was experiencing a slavery mindset, which uh, uh, AKA um, a crab in the bucket mentality. 
mm-hmm. and we would withhold information or we would treat each other a different way and it was it became like a modern day slavery but we didn't call it that but that's what was happening and so I said okay this is not this is not the journey that I want to be in I, I want to shift things I want to change things and when I make it I want someone to be like okay I can look up to Toya. She can help me. She doesn't mind sharing these resources. She doesn't mind helping me get to the next level. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, I don't just hand out people. I don't hand out things. Um, When I talk about stewardship, relationships are important. So no, you don't get to just walk up to me and say, hey, uh, give me all your information. This, this, this. No, (laughs) no. It's stewardship. It comes in so many forms. It comes in so many resources. And so the idea behind that was to be able to say, hey, when you become a great steward and you you start to value your resources and protect your relationships then we can grow and glow together and Mm -hmm. so it initially started off as just a women coming together with businesses and we would highlight I would highlight those businesses and those women that were hidden gems in the community, but Mm -hmm. that nobody didn't know about. Like you didn't know, you didn't know this was a hidden gem, but what you, what you did, what you failed to realize is that you may not know them because they're behind the scenes, but they're doing amazing things. You know, Mm -hmm. some of these women are, uh, um, have million dollar companies, but yet you don't know who they are. And so, uh, so that's really how, that's really how it all started. And so then later on, God said, okay, it's time to grow. I was like, here we go again. He got me doing <laughs> something else. I was like, okay, I thought it was just this. You know, I thought it was just the women, you know? And then he brought He brought to me, okay, so what you about to do now? You about to do the HBCU program. And I'm like, what? And he was like, you remember when you was 19, year old, 19 years old and how, you were treated at that school and how that person talked to you. Now you're going to, you're going to run it back. And then you're going to impact students that attend a HBCU that won't, that may have had that experience, but then they're going to be able to see someone that looks like them that treats them well too. And so I had this stigma in my mind of like being a part of an HBCU because of the idea of what I had about a black woman. Mm. And these had been, this had been my experience. And so I wanted to shift and change those things that people may have been experiencing that we don't necessarily talk about in the name of cloud. We may not say it because we don't, we don't want to share that we have that experience, and, but, we, but we are. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to be able to pour into students, um, black, young black women that were my age that needed somebody like me to be able to say, hey, no, you don't have to be a part of, you know, of any type of group to be Mm -hmm. important you don't need to have a certain status to be important you don't have to know somebody to know somebody to be important you're important just because of who you are and that that was that was the message that I was wanting to to share with them but it was more about giving them those life skills Mm -hmm. because one thing about the Maslow's hierarchy of needs it says that hey if I don't have my needs which is food water my essential needs if I don't have shelter all of these things I cannot move forward I cannot be successful so the idea was to be able to provide them with life skills because they were already getting the academics but Mm -hmm. what happens when I go into a depression what Mm -hmm. happens when I don't feel like I'm enough what what happens then and so we wanted to be able to provide those life skills and so I have women that are in my community that come and share their expertise and they teach on the MAPS framework mindset attraction purpose stewardship and so that was the idea and so recently we launched uh, what what's called the resource program to actually help those students so whether it's they need help with a car note if they need mm-hmm. help with uh, food they have certain dietary needs um, you know whether it's rent utilities we didn't want that to be the one thing that they worry about while they're actually being able to go through through college and mm-hmm. then when that happened God said okay now it's time to do the Dare to Dream Awards I said Lord and then it don't <laughs> stop you know <laughs> Every time I think I'm okay, yo, we got it. And then God says, okay, it's time to do this. But let me tell you, the Dare to Dream Awards is an important part of a Queenpreneur's plan. Okay. Why? It's because the Dare to Dream Awards celebrate Black women in creative industries. So if we're trying to increase the representation. Most of the representation also lacks in the art industry. Mm-hmm. 
because people don't take people in the art seriously. And so I can stem, this is where it started because when I was younger, I wanted to be a fashion designer. And a relative told me that it was too broad. She didn't mean any harm or anything like that, but she was telling me what she thought was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And she said, that's too broad. You know, maybe think of something else. And so I went to school for business marketing and I always always kept that the regret of like was I supposed to be a fashion designer because I never went to school for that and, you know and that's what I really wanted to do and so then fast forward my daughter I, uh, I have a daughter and my daughter is 18 years old now and so when she, my daughter was told uh, she was getting ready she was in middle school she mm-hmm. was getting ready to go to high school and her teacher said what do you want to be when you grow up she says I want to be a cosmetologist and okay. then the teacher, do you want to know what the teacher said to her? What did she say? She said, what's your plan B? <gasps> furious. Furious. I'm in the back seat because I already prepared my daughter for these type of conversations as to how people will respond when you don't say anything that's not in the STEM category. Mm-hmm. Science. If you don't talk about science or technology or engineering or math, like then that wasn't success. Mm-hmm. And so, um, reminded me of those things as to what the purpose behind the Dare to Dream Awards would be. And so not only are we increasing the representation of female Black-owned businesses, but we're celebrating creativity. But Mm -hmm. then we're also celebrating the hidden gem. The people that may not necessarily get that recognition, but they there, but you don't see them yet. They shining, but you don't see them yet. They're not in some type of organization. You just don't see them yet. It's so many hidden gems. And so that's when the Dare to Dream Award started to be an important part of a queen for newest plan. And so when you think of the aspects of a queen for newest plan and how we serve the community, it truly is to increase the representation of female owned businesses and to focus heavily on purpose and so the la- the other aspect that we added was to be able to give scholarships to young girls ages 10 to 17 that were interested in the arts oh. why is that important because when you are interested in the art industry um most of the time a lot of those things are not celebrated especially in the black uh, no, in the black family mm-hmm. um, when it comes to investing in certain types of instruments Okay, everybody, you, you, may, you may get an investment in maybe like piano. Um, you may get an investment in some of the other things that are coming in, in the Black household. But what happens if those people don't have the resources or the funds to do mm-hmm. it? They never get to actually explore if that's what they were supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. But then it goes to the flip side of that. Because when we're thinking about our talent, we go from an urban orchestra sound and we go from a classical sound and we go from the unordinary uh, way that you would see a black person. Yes, we want black ballerinas. Yes, we want opera singers. Mm -hmm. Yes, we want um, we want the violin. Yes, we want the heart. But what we do is that we don't get away from the culture because the black culture is what makes it so great. And so it's almost like adding the hip hop into the the classical sound which uh, creates the urban orchestra sound Mm -hmm. and so the idea is to be able to to bring those sounds together to let black young black girls know that hey there is no limit to what you can do and yes your culture is okay it's okay for you to love that r&b and have that uh that black girl magic in there with that classical sound and so that's the idea of what the Dare to Dream Awards brings. And that's why that's why it goes so well with the Queen for Newest Plan and why we actually started doing the event. But more than more than ever, as to what we do on a regular basis, uh, when we have that event once a year, mm-hmm. the stu- the the things that we do in the community doesn't stop. It's a year round thing. I love everything uh, that you're doing through your nonprofit and otherwise. It's uh, so many thoughts. One of the things is uh, what you do with the uh, the young college women, because so many of them either they're away from home, so they're away from their family, um, or uh, they're living in the city where they're from, but they may not have the family support, or they may just not, or their family may not have the uh, the wherewithal to teach them the skills they need. And this is where I'm going with that. 
because what you do is you're teaching them coping mechanisms where you say you have the, the women come in and give them basically uh, the skills that they need, you know, teaching them how to cope with those daily things, the stress or whatever else it is they may be going through. That is so totally awesome because it's one thing to give them, you know, the toiletries and the food and all the things, but to teach them how to just live life. Those are skills that they're not going to get in the classroom and they're not. Right. Now, it depends. It depends on what HBCU you go to. Well, it depends on what professor you have because mm -hmm. <laughs> when you go to HBCU, that is one of the things. Depending on the professor, the professor is not only teaching you what's in the book, but they're also teaching you some life skills. It depends. But what you're doing is so totally awesome. And I love that, uh, that you have that mindset and the heart for that because they really do um, need that. The other thing is you were talking about the scholarships that you give to the 10 to 17 year olds. I think that in the African-American community, it's crazy. If you sit and think about it, that it's crazy that just now in the last few years, really, that we've come into the fact that we don't have to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We don't have to be so assimilated in the things that we do, that it's okay to add, you know, the hip hop, into the classical to 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 mix those two things together you know why should we forego the thing that's innate in us just to be accepted just go ahead and do it everybody else does why why can't we do that because the thing about it is is that if it wasn't for us there would be no culture right. there would be there would be no good stuff for everybody else to even to look at to uh to read to watch and all the things so i love the fact that you're helping them um explore those outside things uh, so that they don't feel like they're in a chokehold or have to just do the things that are cookie cutter, that they yeah. can't think outside the box and be who they are. I love that. That is so totally awesome. I love that. I have um, one last question for you. And then I would like for you to share with everyone um, how they can uh, contact you for you know, the queenpreneurs plan, if they need coaching, whatever it is. So the question I have for you is this, if you had one message to give someone, what would it be? Find your purpose. <laughs> because <laughs> once you, once you know who you are, nobody can take that away from you. Um, you, people can fire you from a job, but nobody can ever fire you from your purpose. And when you know what your purpose is, you're going to grow and glow wherever you're planted. So whether you're working a nine to five, you're going to illuminate the building when you walk in because your purpose walks before you. And so even if you're on a nine to five right now and you don't want to be there, um, still treat it well, still steward it, still operating your God given purpose, even in that position, find ways where you can explore and operate in that while you're still in the workplace. And when you get home at night, work on what God has told you to do because you never know when it may be your last day working there and you want to be prepared for when you get ready to make your exit and and if you're meant to work a nine to five and work um you know your business and operating that that's all that's okay too that's fine too but most of all if you are not operating your god-given purpose that's the one thing that you need to explore because i've met too many people and then also i'll talk to older people and, and they will say like they, they don't really know what they're supposed to be doing. They don't really know what their purpose. Like after they retire, they, they don't really know what their purpose is. And so you can tell that what they did all of those years was truly, truly just a job. Now they may have mm -hmm. had some passion behind it, but there was no purpose in it. You never retire from your purpose. Never. I love that. You said two things. I got it. <laughs> that you cannot be fired from your purpose. And you cannot be, be, retire from your, I love that. I'm writing that one down too. <laughs> I love that. So where can we get in um, contact with you? How can we uh, get uh, in touch with you for coaching? What is your social media handles? All the things. So uh, a Queenpreneurs plan, uh, we are a Queenpreneurs plan on all platforms. So you can find us on Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, but we're more active on Facebook. So Facebook is our more, uh, more active platform. And then Latoya Whitfield. So actually uh, you can find me on platforms under Coach Latoya Whitfield on Instagram, 
Um, you can find me on Facebook and TikTok, YouTube, uh, under Coastal Toy Whitfield. But a lot of the things that I do are just active as me as a brand, Latoya Whitfield. If you search just Latoya Whitfield on Facebook, like you can fo still follow me uh, that way. But um, most of my my coaching is really geared towards uh, universities and and corporations because I want to be able to incorporate that into the workplace and into those corporations so that they can show how their bo bottom line can be impacted when purpose is incorporated uh, with their leadership, training, and development. Um, but I am a speaker, okay? I'm a speaker. I am a keynote speaker, and so I would love to uh, come to your to your event come to your uh, whatever you're hosting and I would love to be a, a keynote speaker there but what happens is that you can get either or you can get a keynote speaker or a host because I'm a dope host too so I love <laughs> to have fun um, I may, may even make up a song on the spot I'm gonna make sure you laugh but I entertain um, and I engage and I educate those are the three things that I make sure that your audience takes away. And that when I know what that theme of is in that event, I make it mine. But I'm on the LatoyaWhitfield.com if you just want to visit my website. Look at you, honey. You got it all together. <laughs> <laughs> totally love it. I so enjoyed uh, talking with you today. You dropped some awesome nuggets and some jams. Totally excited about what you're doing Uh I pray that God continues to elevate you, uh, that you are poured back into as you're poured out. And again, thank you so much for joining us today. Greatly appreciate it. We're gonna give us thank you. Hand. And I want to. Go ahead. Yeah, I was waiting for y'all to finish. And she always does this too. <laughs> Go ahead. So I want to say one more thing. Um, our um, the third annual Dare to Dream Awards is coming up. It's always in, in September. So if you would like to attend, you can uh, you can visit our website at uh, uh, com, and you can purchase those tickets, which are actually uh, early bird until June 29th. We always sell out of our tickets. So we, uh, we always encourage people to go ahead and get a ticket so that you can be in the room or even if you just want to partner with us by sponsoring or donating, uh, we would love to do that with you as well. Okay. Early bird, June 20th. We will most definitely be sure to put all of that in uh, the description of the video. So if you would like to attend the event, if you would like to be uh, a sponsor of the Dare to Dream Awards, you can definitely do that. We'll be sure to put all of her contact information in the description box. And again, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Totally enjoyed it. Uh, it was totally awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> Thank you. Y'all too. Thank you. Bye-bye. That was such an awesome interview. I'm totally excited. I'm pumped and I'm ready to do all the things. I'm ready to finish the book. Well, I already finished the book, but I need to go back to and do some things. I need to do, you know, get back into doing my conferences and all the things. So I'm, I'm excited. She's got me inspired. Um, my book is already finished. Okay. <laughs> we would like to thank you for watching. Be you sure, I go through, uh... be sure that you like, share, and subscribe. And be sure that you follow uh, Latoya on all the social medias. We will be definitely uh, putting all the information in the description box. Feel free to leave comments. Just be sure to be kind because, you know, it doesn't cost anything to be kind. You know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, just be sure that you reach out and support and all the things. All right. Latoya, I mean. Um, and uh, before we get out of here, we got to pay the bills. Yes, you Soap Company's mission is to provide enriching handmade natural products with love, creativity, imagination, and originality. They have a skincare brand that will provide nourishment and moisturization. Ditch the commercial brands. You shouldn't have to sacrifice your time, money, and health on New Yorker products. No one should. Visit them at JustYouSoapCompany.com. And 
we're back. So that's all we got for you today, guys. Uh, we will see you next time. Remember to uh, be kind to people, be blessed, and most definitely be in peace. You got something to say? I holla. Oh, my gosh. <laughs>